In a lot of ways, the OnePlus 11 5G is really ahead of the rest of the pack, but in some ways, well, it's a problem. Let's talk about it. I've had the OnePlus 11 5G for a while now, actually a good while before it launched. It is a really cool phone and there are some great things about it, but there's also some major problems. Let's get into it, starting with build. Now this is available in a few different finishes. I got the glossy one, which is of course an absolute fingerprint magnet. The edges of the screen curve just a little bit, which I'm not usually a fan of, but the OnePlus 11 feels so nice in the hand, I don't really mind. That screen though on the edges is prone to surface level scratches. I haven't dropped it or anything and there's clear scratches visible. The back camera bump is also going to be pretty controversial. Either you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but either way, however you feel about it, it is still going to collect dust around the ridges. Like there are little bits of hair and things that came from my pocket that I just can't get out of there. Now, you don't really see it unless you're looking at it up close on a camera like this, but it is there nonetheless. It's got a 6.7 inch screen. This is a 1440p LTPO OLED display. Basically means that the refresh rate is high when you need it and it's low when you don't need it. Cool, I like that. But the phone is, well, not as waterproof as you might expect. It will take like rain or something like that, but don't go swimming with it in your pocket. Don't wash it off in the sink. It's got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, eight gigs of LPDDR5X, which is pretty much the fastest memory you can get right now on an Android phone and UFS 4 storage. It also has 80 watt charging into a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but no wireless charging. Now, personally, I don't really care that much about wireless charging. I charge my phone overnight, usually on a trickle charger, and a charge on this thing usually gets me through a few days, even when traveling. I was in New York City just recently, and if you've been there before, you know cell service can really drain a battery amongst all those buildings. At the end of the day, I was finishing with close to 60% on cell service and taking a lot of pictures with my phone. Speaking of pictures, Let's talk camera system. This is a Hasselblad collab with three cameras on it, a telephoto, an ultra wide, and a regular zoom. The main camera is a 50 megapixel sensor that takes shockingly good photos in almost all conditions, though the processing is a bit weird. It's definitely adding flavor. There's a lot of different color profiles to choose from. Personally, I prefer to just shoot it as flat as possible and then use Lightroom on my phone to tweak the photos later. The nice thing is these photos do have a lot of lateral movement for color grading in post. You can take 10-bit photos. It also records 8K video, but kind of sucks. Like, pocket camcorder sucks. I mean, look at, what what is this? What's happening here? I mean, it's cool. I used this clip in the CanGem New York City wrap-up video, and it looked like I was putting some sort of cool, like, you know, film grain effect or something on it. But no, it's just that the camera kind of sucks for video, even though it claims to be 8K. I mean, maybe it is, but it's not good 8K. I would rather have really good 1080p than this. The camera has some other cool stuff. The portrait mode is okay. Occasionally it misses and you get things that should be in focus that aren't and things that aren't in focus that should be. But one of my favorite things about this camera was actually the X-Pan mode. If you don't know what Hasselblad X-Pan is, it's a camera that shoots on a very, very wide aspect ratio. Now this is totally a gimmick, but it's cool. I like it. I had a lot of fun with it. And honestly, you can take some pretty unique shots that way. Here's where it gets rough. This phone had really, really bloaty software when I got my hands on it. Now, I was told that some of these things have been removed since then and were removed at launch, like mine came with Snapchat and TikTok and Netflix all pre-installed, which I don't use any of that, but it also came with straight up advertisements in the phone. I got ads for Spotify. I got ads for sign up for this OnePlus community thing and get a whole bunch of gold. By the way, buy these earbuds for $9.99. You better create an emoji. Get out of my phone. Like if you pay for a device, you shouldn't be getting advertisements on it. I spent a lot of time going through and customizing this phone to get rid of all this software crap. And when I did, it felt great. I put Nova Launcher Pro on there. I had to go through manually with ADB shell and remove some packages that just wouldn't leave me alone. One of which was very intrusive. Pop up every time I unlocked my phone, asking for permission to scan nearby Bluetooth and Wi-Fi networks at all times. I'm not really comfortable with that. I don't want all the devices on my network and everything around me scanned. And if you 
opt out and press continue, well, it pops back up again the next time you unlock the phone. That's just dumb. What's the point in an opt out if it keeps on bugging me until I opt in? Eventually, I decided that I had enough and I removed that package as well via ADB shell. And all of my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi stuff still works fine. Without that service enabled, I could still put another Bluetooth device right next to the phone, open it up, and it would still connect. As sketchy as that was, and as weird as the software bloat is, I did really like this phone. I think that at its price, it's pretty solid. There's a few downsides like the screen scratches and the software, but the battery, the fact that it has fast RAM, fast storage, Wi-Fi 7, which what even uses Wi-Fi 7 right now? That's kind of unnecessary, but cool. It's just an actual flagship phone at a non-flagship price, especially with how much more expensive phones are getting these days. If you find this on sale, I give it a solid recommendation as long as the factors I mentioned aren't a deal breaker for you personally. Me, I'm torn. I've put my SIM back in the Nothing Phone 1, but I wish that the Nothing Phone 1 had the camera system of the OnePlus 11. That gives me high hopes for what OnePlus is releasing in the future, but also for Nothing's Phone 2 when that comes around. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this because I'm curious, you guys like phones? I've always been enthusiastic about it, but I never talked about them too much on the channel aside from this and one other one. Anyway, that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you wanna get active in the community, you can at the forums or Discord, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next time, guys. Peace.